Later tonight, highlights from the Mobo Awards at 10.40. But right now on BBC One and on the BBC HD channel, it's an extra special Friday night as Jonathan welcomes a singing superstar. Welcome, welcome to a very special edition of the show. For me, personally, I don't think it would be possible to be any more special. In the 20-odd years, and, and some of them have been very odd years that I've been hosting programmes like this, there's one question that I get asked more than any other, and that question is, who is there who you haven't yet met or interviewed that you'd really like to, that would be extra special for you? In short, who would be your dream guest? Well, that question gets answered right here, right now, because tonight, the whole show will be spent in the company of that one guest. That's right, guest singular, because tonight that's all we need. Frankly, I'm surprised they even bothered having me on. <laughs> Just a glimpse of her many achievements is astounding. Listen to these numbers, it, it, it's incredible. She's recorded 50 gold albums, 30 platinum albums, 13 multi-platinum albums. She's been awarded 10 Grammys, 10 Golden Globes, and two Oscars for acting and songwriting. And they're just some of the highlights. She's received literally hundreds more awards, fellowships, and honours. But those statistics aren't why I'm excited. They're just numbers, really. Impressive, of course, but, you know, it's a little dry. I'm thrilled because, in my opinion, she is quite simply the most gifted and spectacular entertainer in the world. My guest tonight rarely gives interviews, and believe it or not, incredibly, this is the first time she's ever performed live on British television. So that's right, she'll be chatting, and she will be performing for us this evening as well. Before we meet her, here she is in her first American TV special way back in 1965. Welcome, the one and only Barbara Streisand. was fair showing something 45 years old no one would think a year had passed either oh, can i can i get something out of the way first are you jewish i've always wondered are you uh... <laughs> on my mother's side so that uh, well that's the side of the cat isn't it um let me start by um well what should i address you as do you prefer barbara miss streisand uh barbara, hello barbara barbara, barbara. okay yeah. um i remember seeing uh, a few years back you gave robert redford an honorary oscar at the oscars eh? yes and he right. called you babs some people call me Babs. Yeah, I imagine that's a privileged few who get the, yeah. who get the Babs, yeah. OK, well, maybe by the end of the show, I'll, I'll be upgraded to Babs. Um, <laughs> new album is out, which is exciting news for all of us Tyson yeah. fans. Uh, the last one was Guilty 2. It was called Over Here, I believe. Um, but this it was new called one... Guilty Pleasures. Yeah, it, over in you the States. You know, they do rename them in England. That's yeah, we, very it interesting. It was called Guilty 2 I spent months and months thinking about these names, and then they... Just rename them. You can't, we just changed it. It's very funny. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm so... I was so... T-O-O or T-O-O? T-O-O, a play on words for T-W-O. Let's face it, not the cleverest. Let's sack whoever's in the British Republic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll have that done. I could also have an arm broken as well on the way out. Of there. You remind me of Frank Sinatra. <laughs> The Love is the Answer is the new album. Um, I, I registered, I'm a member of your fan club, your online fan club. You're kidding. Yep, no, I am, and I signed <laughs> up. I won't, I won't tell you your username, but I'll get in some big fights with some of the other ones. Oh, Babs Flame 4000, she's in trouble if I ever meet her. But um, uh, I bought the album, I was so excited it was coming out, so thrilled, and excited because uh, so many of the songs in it I know in advance, mm -hmm. we've got some standards mm -hmm. on there. You're working with Diana Krall. Uh, how does that work for you working with someone else? How do you, uh, to what extent do you listen to other people's advice? To what, uh, to what extent do you use them as a collaborator? And to what extent do you oh, very interesting know question. what you want to do? Very interesting question. Thank you. Because I mostly produce my own albums. Yeah. And um, I thought it was fun. It's an adventure, you know, to do something different, to work with a, an artist who, whom I respect. And um, uh, it was a very interesting, alive experience. And what did you get from her that you wouldn't have put into the album if you were doing it? Oh, her musicians. Own? Her musicians. Will she be getting them back? Or is oh, yes. <laughs> she, she tours like 300 days out of the year. It's amazing. I could never do that. Do you, do you enjoy touring? Will you tour for this album? Do you like performing live or is it...? No. Sorry. <laughs> But it's not I the answer anyone wanted to hear, is it? <laughs> uh, what is it no, about live performing? I don't know. I can never sing, um, you know, somebody's living room, they say, can you get up and do a call? Judy Garland used to love to do that. I saw Liza Minnelli years ago get up in my friend's living room. And that's when I said, after 27 years of not performing live, except for charities and political fundraisers, perhaps, I said, God, how could she do this? How does she get up and sing in front of people without the lights being off. You see, when the audience, it, when you can't see the people, I can go into my own little world of characterization, acting, whatever I do, you know. But if you see people, it's just so distracting. But I don't know. <laughs> but Some people love it, right? They love to perform. And yeah, do you sing just, for yourself at home? Do you? No, relax? no, 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 God, no. No, I go into my garden, you know, I see my vegetables grow, my roses grow. That's, that's pleasurable to me. But what about in the shower, though? Say a bit of Lady never, Gaga never, comes on the radio. Oh. You don't join in? No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> that, that seems like such a waste, because I sing all the time and no one wants to hear me. And do you exercise your voice? No, you don't... I never do, as you'll soon see when I try to <laughs> sing. Because I haven't sung since I made this album, which is last January. And I don't like to exercise or play with the voice or anything like that. And is that because I'm you... lazy? <laughs> I'm lazy, and it's very boring, you know. <laughs> Scales and things like that. Yeah. It's, it's very boring, so I don't do it. Are there certain kinds of music? I mean, I know you've done a lot of a lot of jazz, a lot of jazz-based songs, a lot of uh, the great American musical songs, songs from musical theatre, some disco as well. There were some songs which had more of a disco beat. Wow. Have you ever ever tried rapping? Would you consider? <laughs> A Jewish rapper? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I MC Yentl. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know what's... Uh, I find fascinating. I've been a fan of yours for years. I came to you first from your music, and now I loved your movies. I don't think there's a year... I, every year I, I watch The Way We Were at least once. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. And every year oh. I cry in the first five minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's an incredible film. It's a, a wonderful film. Oh. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Your girl That's is lovely, lovely Hubble. Um, oh, <laughs> it's a girl, oh my God. Probably the worst uh, reenactment of that line you've ever seen. Um, I was lying through but, my teeth. Oh, yeah, well, we'll talk about how unattractive he is later. But, um, <laughs> uh, but there's a whole generation now. When I told some uh, people I know you're on the show, a lot of kids out there, a lot of young people know, they yeah. said, wow, you've got the mum for Meet the F***s on. That's what they... Exactly. They don't know from the way we were. And that, but isn't that great? They that you know, have... meet the fox. Yes, that's right. And it's isn't a question I, I might have mispronounced that slightly. <laughs> no, you said it right. You said it right. I'm a little nervous. Um, <laughs> it looked like great fun, and you've always been known for your comic timing. I mean, that's kind of what your first big hit right. on, on Broadway, I guess. Uh, you showed then. How is it working with that cast? Uh, I guess you knew some of those people before. Oh, yeah. Dustin, you must have I went have known. to acting school with Dustin. I didn't know him then. I was the babysitter paying for my acting lessons, and he was the janitor cleaning up. <laughs> That's how we paid for our, you know, classes. 
and uh, De Niro, uh, I love, and Blythe Danner, I love, and Ben Stiller. Yeah. It was it was great director Jay Roach, who did all those Austin Powers movies. You know. I guess it must be. Uh, oh my God! Is that what you're laughing at? <laughs> that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's very funny. Was that from Was that from that? Was that from Taxi Driver? I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, that was an idea I had about. I think I should have a scene with De Niro, so they wrote that in. The last minute. You and was he, he was obviously happy to play along with that particular Well, scene. actually, what happened there, he kept saying, do it f harder, harder. And I'm not a real masseuse, you know, so <laughs> I tell you the truth, I sprained both thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I had to have cortisone shots. No. Because I got um, twitches and I couldn't move them. And well, that's cause that's the method acting. Yeah, you know that's it, right? <laughs> Um, he looks like he enjoyed it. One thing I've always said, you're doing that, of course, the nails. What, what is the it? Nails? The, the, <laughs> the nails? You mean my nails? Your nails. Oh, right. Your nails. Um, because in all the films, not only do you see Barbara's wonderful nails, they even get a name check in several of them. Uh, they you get, mean they get reviewed? You get, well, no, you mention them as well. It's like, oh, mine, mine, oi, the nails, and stuff like that in the films. Uh, what is it about? <laughs> you're a little Jewish. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it's a, it's a great thing. And you've made my life difficult at home because my 12-year-old, yeah. who I have educated in the ways of Barbara, is now telling me every, every other week, I need nails like Barbara Streisand. No. I need the Streisand honey? nails. You mean your honey? She's 12. Honey, yes, she wants Yes, the, I met her. But they're beautiful. She, she might, they're, oh, they're, they're, they're the real thing. It's not, they're not stuck on. No, but uh, they, they're a pain in the neck, I'll tell you that. Well, they look beautiful. You look well finished. Thank as you. I say. Thank Let's you. have a look. This is a lovely moment. It's a very funny moment for them. Meet the Fockers. He's the man who snips the baby's little winky dink. See, that's Greg getting circumcised right here. We had a ceremony at my parents' house. There was a cold snap and the heat conked. Tell it. The heater conked out. Mom. So no matter how hard he tried, Mom. Mr. Moyle couldn't coax Greggy's tiny little turtle from its shell. You know what? Let's not talk about the tiny turtle, okay? No, it's let's. Okay. this is dinner. Honey, <laughs> half the people at this table have penises. Mom, control yourself. Ross. What? He's right. You're embarrassing. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Make a long story short, Jack. He wound up with a semicircle. <laughs> What's a semicircle? I can't wait to hear this. What? It's a cross between a, an anteater and a... German army helmet. <laughs> <laughs> but honey, oh, mm, mm, mm. you wanted to talk about the wedding, right? Uh, oh. <laughs> Come on, don't tell me you kept his umbilical cord. Of course not. That's Greg's foreskin. <laughs> All right, you know what? That's it. That's it. That's we're enough humiliation. We're, 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 we're having fun. No, we're not having fun. Why did you ask our because we're done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyone in the mood for a Chinese? <laughs> oh that's a funny thing. Oh, that's quite funny. Um, we saw you with Dustin Hoffman there, and you mentioned that in the 60s. That's you a know, period I I'm... went completely hysterical in that scene. I couldn't stop laughing. And it's somewhere, it's on YouTube. Can you imagine? <laughs> this extra bit of film where I can't stop laughing. Well, you know, you can find so many old clips of you on YouTube. I mean, you can find old interviews, old performances. Do you like looking Do you back know, at yourself? No, no, no. I never look at them. But my husband does every once in a while, and he says, look at this. I say, how'd they get that? I thought all this was private property, but it's not. Not anymore. There's no not such anymore. thing. Not anymore, yeah. yeah but amazing. it is, in a way, it's great because this is archive material that, that would otherwise perhaps have been lost or people couldn't see. So it's quite nice that we get to see it. I know it maybe is out of your control, but it's, it's lovely for the fans. Yes, it is for the fans. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you were talking about Dustin, and, and the 60s in New York is a period that fascinates me. Mm -hmm. I would love to have been able to see the clubs, the performers there. Mm -hmm. When you started out, you performed at those little places like the Bonsoir, those mm -hmm. other clubs um, in New York. And the Lion. The, incredible. The Lion, yeah. yeah. And um, there was the Five Spot as well. There was the uh, Blue Angel. The, and the, the Village Blue Vanguard Angel. that you're returning to. And the to Vanguard for a where gig. I auditioned, and, but I didn't get the job. How does it feel for you going back, though, to that small club? And playing, you were just saying you're a bit uncomfortable playing in front of a small audience where you can see the whites of their eyes. So. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be odd, hard for me, but it's, um, you know, it's where I started. My roots were in little clubs and singing with trios and quartets because that's all we could afford and the stages were tiny. And I think it's, I feel bad for certain performers today who don't have that experience of going out and singing in those little clubs, you know? 
let's go back to the 60s a little bit because that period has fascinated me. It mu I, I don't know how it felt to, to be a performer back then, but I get the feeling you must have been the optimism of what was going on politically, the changes then, and the, and the kind of new wave of performers. People like Lenny Bruce were performing down there as well. And, and he Bob was at Dylan the vanguard. Well. Yeah. yeah. Did it feel like you were on the crest of a change? Did you feel part of a new movement? Oh, that was very exciting times. Those were very exciting times. And I was very young and... I used to like that, you know, I was making $45 a week as a clerk, part-time telephone operator, doing different accents to keep my acting alive, you know, <laughs> answering the phone in French and Italian accents. And, um, everything was, um, it was so, so wonderful to have just $45 a week. And I had little envelopes and I would put, you know, my rent, the part for the rent, the part for the telephone. And if I had anything left over, besides saving it in a bank account, um, I would maybe be able to take a cab instead of the bus or the subway. And I just think those were amazing times, you know, when you have your future ahead of you and um, the challenges of making that $45 last and appreciating every, every penny. Although you were famous pretty quickly, weren't you? I mean, it didn't take long after you started singing publicly for it all to happen and then, boom, changed forever. That's true. That's true. Let me ask you about um, uh, acting, acting in movies, because, as I said, some of, you're in some of my favourite movies. You've made some of my favourite mm -hmm. movies. We mentioned Robert Redford already, so let's uh, talk about the way we were. Uh, with the two of you on screen together, there's two uh, of just about the best-looking people on the planet. Oh, that's so sweet. It's, for, it's the truth. The, uh, there's a fabulous picture there. I don't know if you... You'd care to uh, elaborate on what's going on there. It looks like uh, you're, trying to, you're, you're trying to give him a check up there. <laughs> you're asking him to cough. <laughs> he has very curly uh, chest hair, doesn't he? He does, he does. Um, you two are close, Good presumably. Muscles, you, were, you, were, you were close then? You were close friends now still? Yeah, as a matter of fact, he was supposed to come to our house for dinner to see my new house that recently got done after five and a half years of building. Now, when most of us redo our oh, house, yeah, we yeah, maybe yeah. put some new plugs in and possibly, you know, possibly paint a couple of walls. Yours is somewhat more major refurbishment than that, isn't it? Oh, oh gosh, yes. Yes, yes, it's a colonial farmhouse. And um, I'm, I'm working on a book of it now. I've taken a lot of photographs. Well, you do a lot of the designing yourself, don't you? Oh, yeah. And it has a... Yes. What's the story with the basement? There's a basement with an with, awful lot of rooms oh, in it. Well, because I just didn't want a basement, you know. So I uh, thought it would be nice to have a street, a street of shops. That's, that is nice. A street of shops. <laughs> See, what happened was on Meet the Fockers... I, um, well, I, I think we just call that MTF as well, shall we? Okay, <laughs> MTF. Um, they had fabulous doors on the set. So I said, what are you going to do with these doors after the picture's over? And they said, oh, we, we dump them, you know, we break them up and whatever. I said, no, 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 I'll take them. And so I designed the shops around the doors that I I'll got. I'll take the doors and I'll set. build a street under my house with them. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's also, I once went and spent two days at Winterthur Museum, which is the greatest collection of American furniture. It's in Delaware. And they happened to have a street, a very wide street, inside. And I was very inspired by it. Wow. So I thought, why not? You know, I have a doll shop because I collect dolls. So, so they look like shop fronts with windows and yeah. your collectibles inside them. Uh -huh. And what other things you collect? Jewelry, I know. And is it furniture, vases, dolls? Antique jewelry. Antique jewelry. Yeah. Um, in the Art Nouveau room, there are art glass, art glass, and things. I love architecture. Great architecture by the great architects. Like the great architects always did the interiors as well as the exteriors. Not so much today. If you notice, yeah. there's an architect, there's an interior designer, a different person. But the great architects like Macintosh in Scotland and Guimard in France and Horta and uh, the Green and Green brothers and, Lloyd and Wright Frank well, Lloyd yeah. Wright, you know, they did the interiors. As a matter of fact, I thought I was crazy because years ago, many years ago when I got my first big nice apartment after the cold water flat with the bathtub in the kitchen, um, I would design dresses to go with the walls, with the wallpaper, or uh, to be made out of the same fabric as the couch. 
So that it was, you know, I thought it was interesting. And also, if a burglar comes in, you stay still, they don't see you. That's it. That's very good, Jonathan. Very good. That's another good reason to do that. But when I was reading much later about Frank Lloyd Wright and Green and Green, and they happened to design dresses for the women in the houses. I did not know that. I didn't know this, That's but incredible. how, how wonderful. Yeah. Because the dress, you know, I once did a house, an Art Deco house. It was only in two color streams, black to gray and burgundy to rose pink. Now, you couldn't walk into this house wearing orange. <laughs> you would look awful. <laughs> you, you would have to be in black and white or, yeah. or gray. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no one's got any style anymore. That would be better than no, that. Um, okay, Robert Redford, The Way We mm. Were. What a film. When you're making a film like do you know some other, this is, going to, this is well, going to be great? David Lean once said that um, when you're reading a script, if there are five great scenes, then you have a chance at being you know, in a really good movie. And when I first read this uh, treatment, it was 50 pages, and there were five great scenes. And I thought, okay, I'll be in this movie, yeah. yeah. It was a wonderful story. The first time you met Redford, did you think, not good looking enough, I'm going to keep looking around, or was it you thought with lightning we might make this work? Oh, no, no. I wanted Robert Redford from the get-go. And I was in Africa making Up the Sandbox, one of my flop movies. Well, that's a that's I a, love <laughs> this movie. Rent it and you'll see what I'm talking about. I've just, seen, I just saw it two weeks ago. That's the one. You're I don't kidding. want to give this away, but wait what? till you find out what Che Guevara is. That's a, yeah, weird, yeah, it's yeah. a weird What film. did you think of that movie? I didn't like it much. I thought it was bonkers. You're kidding. No. I'm I thought, very disappointed. Well, it's... <laughs> you could have lied a bit, John. <laughs> yeah. I love... No, no, no. I love so many of your films. No, I actually appreciate the truth. Yeah, I that love and the for truth. Pete's I sake I don't like, but the rest I love. I, I didn't like for Pete's yeah. sake. Uh, let's have a look at a clip from The Way We Were. Uh, I watched it again. I've mm -hmm. seen it about three times this year alone. Really? But I watched it again last week. This is a genuine classic. This is Barbara, of course, in The Way We Were. Look, Katie, I... Oh, God, please don't start a sentence with look. It's always bad news. I don't think we're going to make it, Katie. Why? I just don't think it's going to work. That's all. It was too easy for you. Easy? I don't mean sexually. I mean... I mean easy, like everything is for you. You really think you're easy? Compared to what? The Hundred Years' War? You're so ready to fight, you don't have time to understand anything. Counterattack, politics, revolution, cause. That's fine. It's all fine for you. So do it. Stay with it. I admire it. Up to a point. That's right. Up to a point. A okay, point. okay. Don't belabor it. I get it. I get it. I don't fit on Beekman Place. That's what's, that's what's really wrong. It's a wonderful film. Um, directed by Sidney Pollock, I believe, who was a terrifically talented director, of course. Oh, he? he was wonderful. Yeah, I loved Sidney. He died last year and... Uh, very sad about that. He was wonderful to work with. He was an actor himself, so he really understands actors and the process and what makes them tick and how to get a performance. And I won't ask you to name them, but presumably some directors you didn't get on quite as well with. Well, do you want to get into that, do you? <laughs> no. I'm just curious, as, I'm just curious as if that's to why you studied directing. Yeah, as a matter of fact. Because, you know, I was doing a movie, what was it called? The Main Event, I think. And we didn't have a proper ending. It wasn't right. And I love to encourage people around me to, you know, let me know their ideas. Take them from anywhere. And then I sift them through and they may make me have an idea or whatever. So I was telling my driver that. And he came up with a four-page treatment. And so did the sound man. The sound man's idea was excellent. <laughs> so I told the director, you know, the sound man has a very good idea. He said, you want me to listen to the sound man? I said, yeah. Yeah, you know, you have no idea. He has a better <laughs> idea. I mean, you know, you take it where it comes from. So I just never understood that kind of attitude. You, you just have to be open to, to everyone. It must be, if you don't particularly like looking at yourself back, you don't like seeing your performances, it must be difficult when you're directing 
to watch a performance again and again, to watch a scene again in the, in the editing stage? Or is that a different thing? Does it, do you react to that differently? It's always, it's never myself. It's always her, she. It's, a di it's like as if I'm not me. You know, it's another actor. And I'm basically more concerned with the other actors. I kind of leave my stuff for the end of the day or the last. I was, on Prince of Tides, I was the cover set. When it rained outside, we did my scenes. So but there's something nice about that. It wasn't self-serving. You know, it's not, I never wanted the actors to feel as if I were. Which of your films are you, are you most proud of? Which one do you, you most enjoy talking about, or, or not re-watching, because you don't, but, but the experience you remember most fondly? I loved Funny Girl. I loved William Wyler. I loved Harry Stradling, my cinematographer. Did my first four films. But he, he died. He was very old. He did Greta Garbo and Camille. I liked making Yentl. I liked Prince of Tides. I, liked the, I loved the way we were. What else did I do? I can't remember that. Star is Born, were you fond of that one? Star is Born. That was hard to make. What I enjoyed about it was that I wanted to sing live. I'm a very bad lip synker. You know, when you do a movie, you lip sync something. You have to lip sync that you recorded about three months before. So you can never be in the moment. How do I know what I'm going to feel today? I can't just imitate what I did three months ago. So, because I was also the producer, I could say, we're going to do it live. We had a truck follow us, a recording truck, and I was able to sing for real. And that was, that was kind of extraordinary. Let's have a look. Time we've learned to sail above. Film. You love Stars Born? Yeah. Oh, good. Did you? <laughs> I like good. most of them. Um, is it true, and I don't know, mm -hmm. I've heard this, yeah. that, that one of the men you approached, and obviously Chris Christopherson is terrific mm -hmm. in the lead role, but you approached Elvis, or you wanted to have Elvis play that role? At first, yeah. Uh, he was actually the person. It was kind of, could have been about him. But his manager somewhat didn't want him. I always forget the story. You have to ask my manager, because he met with the colonel. And it wow, was something, he met the colonel. Yeah, That's it was something odd about it. I, I don't remember. He didn't want to work all day, or he didn't want to. He got, thought he'd get paid too much. We didn't well, Colonel, something. he kind of just put him in those movies that didn't really stretch him or give him a chance to show what he could do because he, he was, was a talented so gifted. actor. He was. And he, an incredible looking he, man, he incredible was, singer. He was. But anyway, <laughs> it turned out well because Chris was kind of great. Oh, he is great. And yeah. He did a great job. Can so. I, I'm going to ask you a personal question. Do you like hairy men? Is that right? I, do I like hairy men? Yeah, well, I just... <laughs> well, I just <laughs> you like big, beary, kind of big, big, tough guy, macho, rawr, Wait a kind of... Chris is very kind of slight. He hasn't got any hair on his chest. Look at his picture. See his picture? Yeah. I always think of him. Maybe I'm that? wrong. I always think of Chris. Oh, you mean he has a beard? And but I always think of him having a big, hairy chest. No, he doesn't, darling. He doesn't oh. at all. <laughs> so you don't like... You like uh, unhairy men? It depends on the man. <laughs> if I like the man... <laughs> you got on well with Chris? You got on well with most of your leading men? Um... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. But Chris... Actually, there was... I can't remember, but there was something that the press picked up. I can't remember, though. I was doing something and I said something. I don't know. The press gets everything out of whack, don't you think? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, they make up stories, then they say things that aren't true. Well, sometimes they don't make them up, but they just drag them on for a bit longer than you can. <laughs> um, yeah. But you deal with that. That's what I like about your website. You deal, and it's a kind of, you just deal with the well, business and say, this is the I truth. I started a truth alert, but then it got, I, I could be doing that every day as a full-time <laughs> job. 
it gets too much. And I say, you know, the truth wins out eventually. I think so. Yeah. And um, all you can do is your work, do the best you can, and tell the truth. That's why I appreciated you saying what you didn't like, actually. And, um, you know, hopefully the work speaks for itself. Let's have a look. I'm going to show you another fabulous moment with, with Barbara, of course, and the, as we now know, almost completely hair-free Chris Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> to make this as brief as possible, um, there are two people that I would really like to thank. The first one is Abraham Burakowski, who... What do you say? Let's go outside and get some air else. Hey, let go of my goddamn arm, Johnny. Hey, let go of my arm. God damn it. Christ, I'm sorry, baby, I can't find my place. They don't seem to have a place for me down here. The second one is is here with us tonight, uh, John Norman Howard. Hey, hey, don't do that. Hey, not to me, anyway. At least don't do it to me. You did something all by yourself, and it was good. And you don't owe anybody a goddamn thing for that, not me and certainly not them. You don't have to thank them for the privilege of giving them something good. I missed it all day, baby. You're blowing your act. I'm blowing your act. Uh, good night, everyone. Thank you. Great show. Great show. Before we move on from the movies, you know, I've re-watched re most of them. I've seen them all over mm -hmm. the years, and, I, and I've so enjoyed the experience. But a lot of the ones, certainly, that you've worked on as a director, obviously draw to an extent or resonate with you with something in your own life. Uh, your family experience, your past, or where you are at the time. Sometimes, you, yeah. You look for that in, in your films? You know, you look for something to identify with so that you can be truthful. Honesty is what transcends, you know, the truth reaches people. They, they, they know when it's not the truth. Let me ask you about Yentl, because here's a movie uh, which is, clearly was a labor of love for you. Mm -hmm. Clearly it was a story you wanted to tell, mm -hmm. and you wrote mm -hmm. the script for it as well. Partly, with, with yeah. Jack. Which is yeah. a, a remarkable achievement, to immerse yourself to that extent in a film. Not only the confidence you must have in your, in your own abilities, but also uh, the courage that takes, because uh -huh. it, the buck is really going to stop only one place yeah. if it doesn't pan yeah. out. And I made it mostly here, in England, which was fantastic. The cast and the crew of the crew, they used to make me haddock in the morning, and every, you know, break I would have a pasty. <laughs> <laughs> Are you someone who... Uh, because you're in remarkable shape. You look fabulous. I mean, doesn't Thank Barbara you. look absolutely fabulous? Thank you. Um, but I've, I've personally found that as I'm getting older, it's harder to stay in shape. And when oh you do put on weight, it's hard to get off, especially if you love food. Oh. And I, I'm imagining you love I food. Mean, yeah, I would like to start my day off with bangers. You know? <laughs> Yesterday I had half a one. Half but a I mean, it's terrible because I want two of them. <laughs> and then have, you know, tea with uh, scones oh. and mashed strawberries and, and cream. Devon cream. Oh. Please, clotted cream. I yeah. mean, it's killing me that I was trying to get into this dress and I couldn't have my clotted cream and strawberries <laughs> with the scones. So. so how do you do it? What do you do? You're just very really disciplined? Well, I gained five pounds the last week, so <laughs> traveling around and eating in Spain and Italy, you know? Well, you can eat yourself to a standstill in those places. Oh, what can you do? Uh, so if I was to offer you a pasty after the show, you'd probably turn it down? No, I'd probably eat it. <laughs> <laughs> well, all, all back to mind for some pasties then, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me ask you about mm -hmm. now, because you seem to be... Uh, uh, don't take this the wrong way, but I was a bit nervous about meeting you because... You're super famous. I mean, you've been famous for as long as I've been alive. Uh -oh. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that to sound that way. But I, I can't know people when I didn't know of you and love your work. And, and uh, the other day when we were here for rehearsal, there was a kind of a, it was a hushed and sort of reverence. You know, people were scared of speaking. Were, She's still alive? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's because, and, and that was nothing to do with you or the way you behaved. We couldn't have had an easier guest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, Barbara's asked for absolutely nothing. There's nothing in the wider, no special request, absolutely nothing. What do they ask for? What could you ask for? One uh, of those lava lamps? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, and yet, you must be, that must be when you go out somewhere. I guess there's a ripple that goes through the room and people start, oh my God, it's Barbara Streisand. I don't know. I, I'm a stay-at-home kind of gal, you know. I don't go out to big Hollywood parties. I don't go to opening nights. I don't 
I don't do things where there might be paparazzi. And is that because of that? You don't if, want the if attention? If I go to a restaurant and there's paparazzi, then I know they called them or something, so then I never go back to that restaurant. So I'm kind of a homebody, you know? But can you live more or less as you want? I mean, can you go out? If you wanted to walk your lovely dog, just go for a stroll outside your house, could you do that, or would that be, that would attract attention? It's a little odd, because unfortunately, well, we had a paparazzi live on my street. I didn't know when I bought the house. Can you imagine that? <laughs> so, uh, and we live on the beach. And four times I went down to the beach. Couldn't see anyone. You know, made sure nobody was around. Still got my picture. To this day, can't figure out where they were hiding. <laughs> Behind an umbrella. How do they know? Once in a year, I go out to the beach, <laughs> and they got the picture. I, I he must know. just be out there all year round. Maybe he's got to hide on the beach. He's like a kind of sand-covered box, and he just uh, connects over a tunnel. No, I don't know. I don't know. It's um, a network that's... Do you ever go out in disguise? I've tried it. I was doing research for a... Uh, what was that movie called? It was also a flop. Um, but, I don't know, but I um, loved it. No, I didn't like it. Oh, all night long, it was called. Yeah. Hmm. And um, I wanted to do some research on playing. That's her. Yeah. yeah. That's you, Regina. That's her. That's her. And she was kind of a bad country and western singer. So I figured I'd go to a country and western bar. And I put on a blonde wig like that and funny clothes that are not like me, you know, and uh, different colors and a lot of jewelry. And at the door, the guy says, hi, Barbara. <laughs> and I, I found myself apologizing. No, no, this is not my real look. I mean, I, it's interesting, though. I once put on, no, I once put on nothing. Uh, not, uh, I, didn't mean it. I once didn't put on any disguise, but went to, I wanted to go to the antique shopping at the Rose Bowl, you know, in um, Pasadena. So I um, decided to do it internally. You know, I'm Barbara Jones Streisand. I'm, I'm nothing. I haven't made it yet. And nobody will recognize me. And it was very interesting because nobody bothered me for the longest time until I thought to myself, Boy, this is amazing. Nobody knows who I am. And then people started to look at me, going, aren't you? And that's strange. You know, that when I wasn't thinking about it, and just concentrating on and not also, being And also, I guess you were carrying yourself. If they looked at you, you didn't act like, oh, who's that looking oh, no, at me? It was I, just like, yeah. I dressed like a schlump. Yeah. <laughs> that's the secret. Uh, now, we have here a picture of you. You seem to be... And, and this evening, hasn't that's it just been hobby. a joy uh, listening to Barbara this evening, ladies and gentlemen? We've seen... Um, you seem to be in a very happy place. You seem to be, you know, I get the feeling that the, 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 a lot of your life you obviously were professionally as successful as one could be, but you were obviously finding out who you were as a person, as everyone does, uh -huh. going through life. And, and you, you I seem found to out. kind was, of a vibe. Oh, yeah. shock. No, um, I'm much more at ease now. I don't get that upset by, you know, lies or things like that anymore. And is that... You, that was happening anyway, or that's as a result of your relationship with James? Combination of things, you know. You don't have to worry about going out on dates, which are so painful. You know, when you're married and you have a partner, it's lovely to share things with someone, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. It's the, yeah. it's the best thing. Yeah. How, what was your first date with James? Can I ask you that, or is that too personal? My first date? With James. Well, we were uh, fixed up by, by a friend of mine. And I was editing um, Mirror Has Two Faces. And I had two sets of editors, you know, the, the morning shift till the evening, and then I had another set of editors come in in the evening because I was a workaholic. And um, my friend said, well, I'll make this dinner party for you so you can meet him. Well, I thought I was meeting the guy from Hotel. <laughs> or I thought, I, I thought I was meeting a guy with a brown beard, you know, a mountain man with brown, long hair. The kind curly. you like, hairy, yeah. Well, <laughs> on the face, you know, it was okay. Uh, and I walk in, and there's a guy standing there with a clipped hairdo, like a, you know, practically a shaved head, only it was sort of gray at the first quarter inch, and the second quarter inch was red. <laughs> No beard, wow. and I thought, 
who's that? I, did, I, didn't, I didn't. So I went right downstairs and played with the children. <laughs> I didn't say, I think we shook hands and I disappeared <laughs> until I had to sit down next to him. And then once, we, once I was stuck there, I actually said to him, well, I can't say it on TV. Yes, I, go ahead. Who <laughs> up your hair? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. How do I? I could have said who. It's okay. Well, well that'll be on what, YouTube how in half an hour. Substitute <laughs> for that word. That word is an extremely um, expressive word. I you would know? never use it um, <laughs> <laughs> anymore. Now um, he says he says that. Oh my God! He just liked someone that told him the truth, you know. But I also had just come from directing Jeff Bridges, so I was always used to combing his hair. Touching his hair, moving his hair, <laughs> fixing his hair, you know. And, uh, and I put my hand through his hair. Now, I wouldn't have done that had I not been directing, you know, if I was just me, private life. But as a worker, yeah. you know, everybody in the cast becomes partly my children, my family, my sisters, brothers, whatever, you know. You have to know them intimately to get the best performance out of them. So quite an intimate thing to do to someone. It like was this. quite intimate. It wasn't like me at all, but as, again, as a director. So Renata, who's here with me today, and she's still here with me after 37 years, my assistant, um, she's also my little dog's nanny. <laughs> she's Samantha's nanny. And um, she, she was going to stay there and drive me home. And I said, you know, I have to go home now because I have editors waiting. And he said, oh, no, no, you know, cancel them and I'll drive you home. Uh, ooh. <laughs> it's, it's nice to have somebody tell me what to do, you know, after yeah. directing. So uh, that's what happened. I called the editors and said, you can go home now. Yeah. I guess as well that was, you know, not many men would, they would be a little intimidated by you. And to meet someone immediately who wasn't and you felt a spark, that's a... That's a big thing. That was a plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's obviously been terrific for you. It's, a it's 13 thing. years we've been together. Wow, Can congratulations. you imagine? 13 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how is it at home for you? Are you pretty much on the same, on the same wavelength? Is one of you tidy, one of you messy? One yes. Of you... That's, that's how it seems to go, isn't it? He's Who's messy and I'm very tidy. <laughs> but is he big messy? Is it pants on the floor, socks everywhere? That big kind of... messy. Oh, dear. You can't talk to him after 13 years and tell him to... It's I've been telling life. him for 13 years, but he doesn't listen to me. You know what you need to do is, if you find any of your stuff in the world, just put it straight in the bin. What's a bin? Trash. Ah. <laughs> the really? house, house will be clean, but he will move out eventually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I'll do that. You don't want that, no. no. Uh, well, let me ask you, you mentioned uh, Samantha, Sammy, your dog, who is... Uh, there's, there's a picture of oh, Barbara with Sammy on the new you. album. It's a lovely picture, and I love the couch and the... the chin are you wearing a chenille sort of drape there? Is that why? I picked up the blanket and I just threw it on me because it was a nice right, color and it was soft chenille. Well, the colors are great. Yeah. What a beautiful dog I met. Uh, and he's not, she's not a Bisson Fouille, is she? What, what no. breed is she? She's a Coton de Toulier. I'm glad I didn't From Madagascar. That. She's a beautiful animal, very sweet. Very and she, smart. She's, I guess, uh, pretty much a big part of your life. Does she share the bed with you guys? Is she allowed in the bedroom? Oh, yeah. She sleeps on our heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she knows, you know. She knows not to get kicked around, so she's smart. She goes up there, you know. Then sometimes she comes down. She goes all over the place. I have a present for you, and I thought, well, then buy a present for you, because what do we buy? Right. Uh, I bought a, a little present for you to give to Sammy. So I hope you like it. Let's start in there. And I brought you a present for your I, dog. I have it in my, uh, oh in my, my dressing room. Oh, my God. You both gave each other dog presents. Because we're dog people. We're dog people. It's kind that's, of lovely oh and a little God. bit pathetic of both of us, isn't it? Look at How that. How pretty. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know if it'll fit. Uh, I think it will. I'm hoping it when will. When she's going out on dates or things not, like that. Yeah. When she has <laughs> play dates. If not, I've got the receipt, so we can change it. That is beautiful. Uh, and that came out of our pocket, not the BBC. Just in really? Case. All right. Just in case. Oh, that's um, gorgeous. Thank you, you know, so do you, much. Do you ever... I mean, Sammy uh, is a mm -hmm. charming, very, very placid, very sweet nature, she said. Yeah. Very calm. Some of my dogs are a bit mad. Do you ever dress her up? Do you like... Do you put her in outfits? You know, I've tried, but she really doesn't like it. And so I, I sort of become her and say, I'm not going to like this tutu. Yeah. Uh, and um, so I don't do it. But when she goes out in the rain, 
we do put a raincoat on with a hood, and it is so <laughs> funny. You can't even imagine. Because she would come in soaking wet, and she has long hair. And it's, yeah, it's horrible for them. Yeah. We, I do dress my dogs up on a regular no, you basis. Don't. Yes, we do. Please. I know. How come I'm what not gay? You? I love you. I love dressing up <laughs> my dogs. What's you like? And you like the opera, I bet. I love opera. Oh, okay. I love opera. I love opera, too. Okay, there's some of the dogs dressed up at home recently. Wait a minute. That was a little uh, party we had. But in honour of you being on the show... Oh, that's very funny. In, in honour of you being on the show, I've decided to dress them all as different characters from your film. No. Yeah. I, re I really don't want you to take this the wrong way. This is, this is an affectionate homage. Okay? Gwyneth Paltrow told me you were funny. <laughs> she was right. Here we go. Let's go main event first. Their, their main event, and we tried to dress... Um, oh, my God. We tried to dress Spider. Does the dog have long legs? Well, not as lovely and long as yours. Let's have a look at Spider <laughs> in the main... Oh, oh, that is funny. Oh, my God. He liked it. He liked it. He liked it. OK. Oh, that okay. Is funny. There you go. <laughs> You've got a fabulous derriere in that photograph, if I may say well, so. Well, thank you so much. Well, congratulations. <laughs> OK, now, let's do Funny Girl. <laughs> what an incredible outfit you're wearing. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, leopard skin. Yeah. Irene Sharif. She OK, so we've put uh, Yoda in the leopard skin, and they're... Um... <laughs> oh, I don't believe that. The dog looks fake. <laughs> Just to say that the, no dogs were actually killed and stuffed for this oh, uh, part funny. of the show. Funny. Let's go to Hello Dolly. There's a beautiful that hat. And a the gowns and the hats and that, you look dress. absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and here we have a Mr. Pickle. <laughs> you put a dress on Mr. Pickle? <laughs> He's confused, what can I say? <laughs> yeah. I think we have Star is Born. And this was the sweet. That's just that we went with it. It's a beautiful a kind of knitted white chocolate. Sweater, yeah. yeah. And we went for Captain Jack. <laughs> oh my God. You mean he has he's different colour pores than he, his head? <laughs> no, he's just. Well, the head is all different colours. He's a, he's oh. a very sweet. Where are his boy. eyes? His eyes are. We, have, we found one of them. We're still looking for the other one. And then oh. finally, this is my all time favourite, Yentl, uh, which is a tremendous movie and a fabulous performance. Um, and, and I decided to dress Sweeney, who's the one who sleeps in Abbott. <laughs> there he is. Oh my God! Got the glasses and everything. You got the oh, other one of him. I think so the other one. Funny. <laughs> That's glasses. He's wearing glasses. <laughs> Looks like a monocle. Yeah. He, had to, he looks a little bit cross. I don't think he was ready for shawl. Sure. Okay. <laughs> That's a yarmulke you put on that. He guy. has a yarmulke. <laughs> if you like any of those outfits to take home, they can be given to you as well. Um, yeah, if you'd just rather. Take the yarmulke. Yeah, just take the yarmulke. Like I said it. Um, be before you go, uh, there's a question I, I really do want to ask you because y your life story is incredible. I mean, your childhood is mm -hmm. in itself, you know, would, would, would make an interesting and engaging film and your career is remarkable. Um, surely a film about your life would be... Ooh. Yeah, I really? would have thought it would have been a, a, a huge temptation well, to be involved in something first like. I have to write the book. I'm writing the book and taking the pictures for this building of a dream, building houses, transformations. I've made films about transformations. This is, you know, how do you start from scratch with a, or take a 1950s tract house and make it into something else, you know? So I'm working on that book. But and after that, I, in the process of doing it, I actually am remembering my life and jotting it down. And so I'll probably do that next. So it'll be your story. And I'd like to direct a movie that I'm not in. That's all yeah. I'd like to do. That. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you this evening. I'm sure everyone would agree with me. It's been a privilege. <laughs> And, uh, and now for the really exciting part of the evening. As I think you probably know, Barbara's going to perform for us as well tonight. She's going to perform for us live here in this intimate studio setting. Um, I just have to say, you know, it's not an apology because I said I would do this, but I haven't sung. Since, did I sell, tell you this already? You, you, well, you said earlier. Oh, yeah, since last January? Yeah, since you recorded the album. Yeah, and I don't, and I don't vocalize. So, you get what you get, right? <laughs> I think whatever we get, we're going to be happy with. But you say that, but I was, I, I, I came here to the studio last night because Barbara was rehearsing and it sounded perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in saying thank you for now to the wonderful Barbara Streisand.
you. Thank you. This is, this is like a little nightclub, actually. So.
And the moon stood still for the night bird's song If you go away, if you go away If you go away But if you stay I'll make you a day Like no day has been Or will be again We'll sail on the sun We'll ride on the rain We'll talk to the trees And worship the wind Then if you go I'll understand Leave me just enough love To hold in my hand S'oublier, qui s'enfouit déjà, oublier le temps des malentendus et le temps perdu à savoir comment oublier ces heures qui tuaient parfois à coup de peu quoi le cœur de bonheur ne me quitte pas, ne me quitte pas. Ne me quitte pas, ne me quitte pas. But if you stay, I'll make you a night like no night has been or will be again. I'll sail on your smile, I'll ride on your touch, I'll talk to your eyes that I love so much. If you go away, if you go away, as I know you must, there'll be nothing left in this world to trust, just an empty room full of empty space, like the empty look I see on your face, how oh, I would have been the shadow of your shadow if it might have kept me by your side if you go away if you go away please don't go away Our 14 remaining celebrities compete together for the first time. Will it be the Quick Step or Paso Doble on Strictly Come Dancing at 7? And later tonight, BBC One's at the Mobo Awards highlights here at 10.40 tonight.